YouTube, this is Cece the Sewing Teacher with the last of the costumes. So I've been going from kind of most expensive, most complicated, down, down, down to like, this is the stuff that if you have like two days, you have something to go to, you have nothing, watch. <laughs> okay. For one, all of this is recycled. Granted, most of it, like, you may not have in your stash, so you may have to spend some money if you want it. Most of it, though, you'll be fine. Okay. Waist cincher. We have watched me make three of... This is my third one. Okay. I changed some of the construction. I added a lot more boning because this is made for a plus size person, and four was not going to cut it. Nine did. Um, I put bias tape on the top and bottom because after doing the um, OB, or the OBS went went uh waist center and the one for the coat bias tape wins every time with bony every time okay then i have skirt a skirt okay if you have an hour and you want to get a skirt from beginning to finished done this is not your skirt this is about a two maybe three hour skirt depending on how you're doing it okay if you want a skirt in an hour, pick a sheet. Twin is okay. I If you want two skirts, use a queen, fold it in a uh, half hot dog style, cut it in half. Okay? Now you've got three hems that are already done of a flat sheet. Specifically, flat sheets. Love flat sheets. Fitted sheets make things a little more difficult. Okay? Take a flat sheet, cut it in half if it's queen. Okay, you've got a raw edge on top and you've got three finished seams. So the two shorter seams together, then fold down that raw edge in twice until you either have a really thick waistband or a really thin one, depending on like your height and what you need, okay? And then put an elastic or a drawstring in, and you're done. I, that's how I made long skirts for my volunteers. They were not the biggest fans. <laughs> Um, I think the major reason for that is because you end up with so much gathered around the waist and kind of really tulipy, it didn't twirl and be fun. Um, for their overskirts, what I would do is have a square, cut a hole in the center, and that's where I put my waistband. <laughs> so, if you want like a really basic skirt, and or like long skirt and overskirt, that's how I would do it for my volunteers for years. They're probably secretly going, oh. And now she's going to do a fun one. This is a fun one. Okay. So this has eight panels. And then it has the casing on top. These eight panels let you just have fun. <laughs> you can do a rainbow. You can do like alternate, like one and one alternating. You can have half the skirt one way, half the skirt the other way. And it's got so much twirl and dance to it. I really like those skirts. Okay. I also go into this portion, how to make it more customizable to you. Quick thing, if you have a circle and the waistband is too small, cut down from the waistband in order to make that circle um, bigger. And if you don't, and instead of trying to do anything to the hem, always take from the top when it comes to a skirt like this. Take from the top, it makes it more flippy. Goodbye. <laughs> Jarvis was watching me with such a concerned look on his face. Anyway, pants. So this can either be bloomers underneath your skirt or actual pants for somebody. Um, especially if you don't want to wear a skirt. <laughs> I don't blame you. Um, so for so these were originally harem pants, and I'll get into that later. You can use the same pattern and just shorten the leg to about knee length, or mid-calf, and so it bunches up a lot at your knee length. And it's great for bloomers, because bloomers are amazing. And that's also how you would get Renaissance pants. Um, the thing is, with this pattern, it wanted a zipper. The answer is no. I will show you, or I, in this portion, will explain in much more detail how I came up with this black strip to solve the issue. I will tell you ahead of time, if you're going to use this pattern and you want this to actually fit, 
on the top. Just add like six, eight, ten inches to the top. <laughs> and then it'll, it, it, it will save you so much. But also keynote, this is not floofy enough. Uh, this was supposed to be like a size 24-ish pants. Um, I'm a size 18 and the my thighs don't fit. So if you're going to make these, also widen it significantly or if you're not at the max of the pattern, make a few sizes bigger. You will thank me. And then the unisex top. <laughs> so I made the same top every single time and this is a peasant top. It is straight across when you just pull it. And so I put elastic or drawstring. Drawstring was easier because then you could tell where the front was. Some people had a little bit of issue with that. Um, there is elastic here. Or, well, there's elastic in this because <laughs> I'm not making a bunch of it. Um, you can make this sleeve short, elbow length like this, or even long. Um, the other cool thing about this is that you can just lengthen the pattern and you've got a chemise or a tunic. Like, just you can make this longer, you can make it shorter. I don't recommend making it shorter, but that's just me. Um, then you've got a vest. So this vest was not laced up like most of the vests that my volunteers preferred. Um, so we just ended up with corsets, like all the corsets. Um, so this actually has darts in it, so it does have a little bit of a three-dimensional shape in the front. Um, you can just skip the darts and make it flat and it'll work just fine. Um, it was supposed to be entirely reversible, except the way that it wanted me to do the underarm was not going to happen. French sand it instead. So, I really did like this pattern though. Um, I did use interfacing in this, um, but if you use a thicker fabric or just a tighter weave of sheet, it'll be, it'll have enough umph to keep its shape better than the green one that I grabbed. Um, the green one has a lot of grit, which is great for the pants. Not so much for the lining of the vest. Or for the belt. But I wanted green. <laughs> so that is how, or these are the pieces that I've made for this video. You can mix, mix and match and have fun with it a lot for just a European peasant. Um, the other thing, and I'll share a bunch of the photos, is that peasants really didn't wear patterns. So they a lot of solid colors. So I will share photos of what I've done in the past and how we accessorized and have fun with it. Um, I highly recommend a Renaissance Fair if you've never been. So much fun. Um, so yeah. All right, quick PSA. Um, the original pattern is cultural appropriation. Um, I actually found this out because I had laid out all the pieces after I had cut them out and basically sent it to friends and family going, hey, look at the gypsy costume I'm going to be working on. And almost immediately got a message back from one of my dear friends and she was like, Cece, my culture is not a costume. To which I immediately said, all right, educate me. No, <laughs> like I need the down low. I need to know what's going on. I need to be sensitive. Like, communicate with me. And so her and I actually have had a really good conversation about, like, um, the culture that she comes from, um, that she is Roma or Romani, and there's so much fascinating things about this. Um, I'm going to keep it brief because of the fact I am focusing on these pieces as Renaissance mix and match costumes, and so that's going to be the focus of this. But I did want to point that out. Um... She didn't ask me not to make the pieces, she just wanted me to bring awareness to this subject. And I'm very, very thankful to her for reaching out to me and feeling comfortable doing that. So we're going to go ahead and launch into the materials and the rest of the video. Um, I hope that you have fun and that this is a little bit educational for you. This pattern has been in my collection for quite some time. Um, part of the reason it's been in my collection is because at one point I was in a huge belly dance phase and this looked very modest to dance in and that made me really happy. Um, I really broke it out because of the fact that some of the elements of this 
are very, very similar to the Renaissance Fair outfits that I make, or made. Um, I'll go into why each of these pieces are inaccurate for Romani. The designer herself, when you, and she's the same designer for the kimono cosplay, said that this was an international pattern on her blog. Hello, Jarvis. Hello. Um, said it was an international pattern and that it was a gypsy pattern that came about when she was doing tribal belly dancing research. So it's not accurate at all, which again, I wouldn't expect. Um, even for American tribal belly dance style, this doesn't quite fit either. However, I'm going to point out where all of the differences in these pieces are wrong for Romani when I go over the pieces themselves. The two things I want to mention that aren't in this that you can kind of see in this outfit is uh, coin skirts were actually dowries for newlyweds, so that tended to be the only money that newlyweds had. This head scarf veil thing um, by the Romani is actually called a diplo. Diplos are really interesting because they are passed from mother to daughter, and it's really an expression of where that daughter is in womanhood, depending on the tribe. Um, it's also a very religious expression for them. Um, they're worn a lot with braids or like certain hairstyles as well. Um, another thing I did want to point out is that I'm using recycled materials. So, this... So I'm using bed sheets. And Carla was not 100% sure where bed sheets la land in the Roma pen between impure and pure clothing di uh, divisions. So, like, things that you wear, like underwear, you don't wash and store with your other clothes. And things that, like, touch the floor or worn on the bottom half of you are, again, washed and kept stored separately than your, like, shirts and vests. So, the shirt that I'm making is made out of muslin, so it's not, it's a recycled from other projects, not necessarily from bed sheets. But the vest is made out of bed sheets, so she wasn't 100% sure where it fell in the Roma pen, but she thought it was okay. So, not 100% where that falls. How the pattern made the waist cincher slash belt. Uh, to quote Carla, belts are belts. Um, she really didn't have anything on the comment of this in relation to the costume. I used um, leftover midweight interfacing and leftover featherweight to have this have a little bit more bulk. Um, I may or may not add more to it. I'm not sure. Um, but this is just to kind of be a midriff area um, embellishment for the most part. Um, why it doesn't match when you fold it in half? I have no idea. Um, I swear I folded the pattern. Um, and I also don't know how that stain came to be, but we'll figure it out. This is the inside lining anyway. Um, so for the most part, this is going to end up having your grommets. It is supposed to be this front lacing belt. Again, great for a peasant outfit or just for like costuming in general. I love waist cinchers because you don't have to be as strict with measurements, um, but they do have to fit nicely. And that is the big caveat is having it fit nicely. If you don't like wearing it, you're not going to wear it and there's no point in making it. So for a costume piece, this is actually really good. Um, this could work for the fairy outfit. It could have worked for the coat outfit. It's overall a great piece. So with this belt, it is going to be slightly different. For one, I have a different boning. This boning has removable plastic. Oh, it's just a baby. Poor baby. Um, so you remove the plastic, you cut it to size, you remove the plastic, you sew on the edge of this, and you stick the plastic back inside. That is how this boning works. Um, this only wanted like four total pieces of boning. But if you look at that, there's no way that's happening. So, we're going to do this a little bit differently than the pattern, as per my usual, apparently. Because um, I also think that this waist uh, cincher slash belt is just too small for any plus size person, which seems to be my, my usual complaint. So, I'm going to put one in the center. I'm going to put one right here, two 
three, four, and then five right where the grommets are supposed to go. The reason for that is because this has no seams to reinforce it and make it stick. Then, instead of turn sewing it, turning it right side out and top stitching, bias tape. Which, again, this is made out of recycled stuff. If you only have to pull stuff out of your stash, I have had so much leftover boning from other projects, and who does not have a stash of bias tape that they've maybe bought an extra pack thinking that they would use it for a project and then never used it? There are a lot of projects, for example, my aprons, that I would have bought bias tape to put on the edging and then not ended up using. So. I think more is merrier, um, especially with how much spacing is in between all of these. Because, um, you know, when you have plus size, four is not going to cut it. And especially with the awkward shape of this one, I think more boning is great with how flimsy the fabric is. So, um, first thing I did was I cut this, and this is how much I have left over, which is just going to be used for another project. And then... So for the bo plastic boning, I left it whole and then did all of these channels and then I start adding this boning. So first things you need to do is if you try feeding this into the channel, it is not going to cooperate with you. So you need to make it a little more rounded, which I, for me just means taking off those corners. And then you feed into the channel itself. And push up, up, until it reaches the top of the channel. There we go. And then I cut off this excess. Careful not to cut your fabric. This is much easier off camera, let me tell you. And then I go ahead and I cut these at an angle so they're not so pokey. And then push it back in. So now I've got boning in my channel. So this is actually, you can make channels. You don't have to, you can just buy or use plastic to put them into this. And this is basically like folded over like a little bit of a thicker cotton. Come on, focus. Focus. No? Okay. Um, it wants the background. So this black um, piece is basically just folded over cotton that's been stitched to mark where the channels are. You can do this with your own fabric to make this really recycled. Um, I don't know about you, but like some, uh, or you can get bone or like excess boning out of some companies' um, bras that you may uh, not want, which may actually fit these right here. Um, but Again, if you want to go even further with recycling, you can make your own channels out of fabric and you can go ahead and use whatever thick plastic. Um, I know some people use feathers um, in order to add that stiffening layer or that stiffening to your waist cincher. So I'm going to finish the rest of these up in a moment, but I already have these ones done. And... So my channels, there we go, are nice and pretty, mostly. Um, if I was entering this to, into the county fair, I might have gotten a little bit of a more matching thread, but I'm not, so. <laughs> uh, everyone can attest that I normally use black thread, white thread, and then very seldomly will I use any other color. Um, this one was still in my bobbin from the woodland uh, top, so I decided to just keep with the theme. But this is not the same fabric because this is an actual sheet. It's just green. Okay, so I'm going to finish the boning, and then I'm going to stay stitch, or I'm going to do what we did for the kimono's belt, which is I'm going to stitch the ends right here. Flip it inside out, because I'm only going to do the ends, and then I'm going to stay stitch the top and the bottom of this so that these two layers aren't moving independently. So, finish boning, stitching right sides together, 
flipping so that wrong sides are together and then stitching all of this down. Looks with the stay stitching. This is the inside lining, obviously. This is the outside. I'm on the fence of whether or not I want to stitch this portion. Mm, I might. Anyway, um, so next portion is getting the bias tape on. You can make bias tape. Um, it's simply just cutting fabric, folding it in on itself like this, and then folding it again and ironing. Um, there is actually like fancy, and I kind of want one, uh, feet that you can put unironed fabric in that is the appropriate length and it'll fold it over as bias tape and just sew it on. <sighs> Future goals. So I'm going to sew this to the lining side and I'm going to sew right where that crease is in between my thumbs. And I've already done stay stitching, so it's mostly just making sure I'm sewing below that which is really easy because the stay stitching I did should be lower and then I'm going to fold it over all the way and then stitch on the front which will also close it and should make the back look nice and pretty. I'm probably just going to end up sewing this seam so that because this boning is supposed to support the grommets and I want it really clear where the grommets are at. So I'm just going to go ahead and sew this real quick before I sew this on. I will be back. This will be the last time you'll see this and you probably still won't see it with grommets because grommets. So this will have grommets right here and it has bony inside. So this is the top. This is the bottom. It is supposed to go where your natural waist is. Um... But it can go kind of under the bust or a little bit lower depending on your shaping and how comfortable it is. So that's great. Um, I'm going to save this bias tape. The thing is, is that if you have a bunch of just chunks of bias tape and it's not quite enough to finish this, I really think you should do like what they do to connect pieces of bias tape and sew, sew it diagonally. And then have like a rainbow of colors for the trim of your belt because that would be recycled and so cool. So um, Romani are very well known for wearing multi-tiered skirts. Um, typically it'd be tiered horizontally instead of vertically like this one. However, I don't think this would be inaccurate um, for them to wear. As Carla's theory for multi-skirts is that it's born out of poverty and making do with what you have available while still looking good and being modest. Modesty is a very huge part of Romani culture. This would reach about mid-calf, which would be about modest for them. Um, I feel like somebody had added the harem pants to make it more modest, which is actually what I had thought, because I am a very modest dresser as well. Um, so this is the waistband for the top, and so it'll alternate between this paisley red, paisley red, paisley red. Makes a really beautiful recycled skirt. I love making recycled skirts. This pattern is great for just everyday wear or for a costume. Um, not a Romani costume. Please don't dress as gypsies. It is cultural appropriation. We're not doing that today. But the skirt itself is a great pattern. Great idea. If you're recycling materials, I highly recommend this pattern. Um, there are four panels of the red, four of the paisley, and you can just make a straight up rainbow out of that and just have fun with it. So this is the skirt. It's a dancing skirt, so it's going to be extra floofy and fun. So I actually have white thread in my serger. Or not my serger, Sam's serger. Um, in the serger. Anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and alternate these patterns. Red, paisley, or red, paisley, red, paisley. And just make a giant circle. Like match up the top, match up the bottom, straight seam. Um, this I'm going to sew like I did the casing for the harem pants and I'm going to leave about this much open and then press it open and sew down that seam so it will stay open nicely for the elastic. I found out that this skirt is actually supposed to also have a zipper. Why? Why do this to me, everyone? Why? So I'm going to go ahead and also not do that. Um, so because this yoke is supposed to um, 
be for a zipper. I'm going to go ahead and not do that. Um, I am going to, because this is a slightly too short and I think slightly um, too thin. Because if I fold it in half, it doesn't really work. Well, no, that'll work. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get back into the remnants that I have for this. Cut something that's probably slightly wider and slightly longer so that everything flows nicely when I put it together. Ten seconds later. Um, so in the remnants, I had not cut this folded over stitched part of the sheet. So I'm going to go ahead and recycle this and use this for the waistband casing. Because it's already folded in half. I'm going to trim it so that it's not sewn on the bottom and that it's nice and even. And then I'm going to make sure that it is to the circumference of the skirt when I'm done with it. Quick reminder, if you need to hem the bottom, but the top is not as making it as floofy as you'd like, instead of hemming, or don't take the inches off of here, take it off up there. So, I have the waist done. So what I did was after I hemmed, or like, surged this part, I went ahead and pinned all the way around like you would for bias tape and then left this spot open so that was the exact amount that I needed and then cut it and then did the seam. Okay, so the seam was just sewn with a hole purposely in mind for the elastic and then I stayed stitched or top stitched that entire seam open so that the hole stays nice. Now, in order to finish this waistband, I'm going to hold this over, make this seam stand up, and then make it hidden. And then I'm going to do that all the way around and just basically top stitch all the way around. And it'll be great because I'll have a nice waistband and the ability to put um, elastic in. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm also going to go ahead and fold in and hem the bottom hem. All done. So this waist casing is a bit large for the elastic, but I also like how it looks <laughs> being oversized, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, it does mean that this non-roll elastic band will have a tendency to twist inside here. But I don't think that's too much of an issue. It also gives you the huge advantage of easily being able to push every all of the skirt excess to one side or the other. But I really do like how this turned out with the modifications I made. Quick recap. If you want to make a custom skirt top very easily, okay, make your skirt panels. Make sure your skirt panels are as many or as few as you want depending on the skirt that you want. Eight panels was good for this one. You may choose to do more, you may choose to do less. Okay, this pattern is great for that. Do not put zippers in your advanced skirts, please. It doesn't make it, I don't know, I don't like zippers as much as possible in garments that are supposed to flow. And if you put a zipper in, then you're going to want that zipper to stay in one spot. And sometimes this stuff moves. Okay. Custom waistband. Have a length a little bit longer than the total circumference of the top of the skirt. Um, pin it. Make sure that it is the exact length that you need. Pinch the seam allowance together. Leave a hole, but sew it. Then so um, the one side of the casing to the skirt, preferably with the line, or uh, so that when you fold it over, it's this side that you're sewing together. And it works really well when you do it like that. Like so much skirt. Okay. And I also hemmed. I didn't want to do a rolled hem. <laughs> Mostly because that means resetting the serger in a minute to, so, or resetting the serger and I, I'm lazy. I'm sorry, but the skirt is done. Okay, so this is a that was turned into the pants. So, of course, this is not accurate. Um, Romani women um 
did not wear pants outside of certain jobs. So, of course, you wouldn't have those pairs of pants paired up with your skirt. Um, these harem pants tend to be connected to belly dancing. And uh, belly dancing was connected to Roma because dancing is a huge part of their culture. Um, many women made money that way, and it was a huge fixture in their gatherings and celebrations. They originally come from northern India, so a lot of traditional dances appear similar. Um, harem pants are just kind of that overall exotic women kind of putting mesh together. Um, the Roma definitely wouldn't have worn them in medieval Europe when, like, being different got you killed. Oh. Okay. So I read the directions. Because I thought I knew what I was doing. I thought this pattern, thought I knew what I was doing, because I've made pants. I've made plenty of pants. Harem pants are just oversized pants with elastic on the ankles. Like, same basic instructions for pants. So if you tell me that I need a zipper, I trust you. I should not have trusted. Okay. Directions literally say, stitch the curve up to the notch. Leave said notch open. Stitch and gather the top portion where, like, your waistband would be. And then it stops. There's no, like, it didn't have me cut a casing for the waistband. It didn't have the instructions for the zipper anywhere. It just stopped at that point for the waistband and just stopped. Like, it continues down for all the other directions for the bottom half of this. But for the actual waistline, it stopped. I don't need a zipper. We're not doing a zipper. <laughs> elastic. I have tons of elastic. So much elastic. I love elastic. Especially on waistbands. Because if you don't give me a waist casing and you want me to somehow work with this to make a zipper happen, it's not happening. So, what we're going to do instead. I am probably still going to have to make a waist casing. Depending on how much room this curve gives, which is probably not enough now that I'm looking at it. So, depending on how much give it has when I sew the curves, I might also cut out a waist casing and just make it the same way as the skirt and just skip the zipper and put elastic in because it's oversized enough. It's hair and pants, everything's... <sighs> and my kitten's playing in the background. All right, so here we go. We've got the um, front and back center seam sewn. So that these are made. I went ahead and made the top nice and pretty so that I can just fold it down and add elastic. Or it's going to be nice and pretty for when I if I add a casing to the top. I have not figured out yet, so I'm actually leaving that alone until I have pretty much everything else done, and then I'm going to focus on this waistband. Um, so the next portion, so you sew the two curved sides of what you cut out in this pattern. And then you're going to match center seams to make the legs. Then you sew this um, inner leg theme, or seam, theme, inner leg seam from ankle to this seam from the center front and back, and then down to the next ankle. This is like... Pants are quick if you don't have to mess with zippers and buttons. Like, I can make a pair of pants in less than an hour from ironing the fabric, cutting, and then sewing it. Especially if I'm using a serger. Um, so the next part that I'm going to do is just do that seam. Then I'm going to do the ankle, or make the ankle casings, which I will show as soon as I'm ready. Put the elastic in that, and then we're going to figure out how that fits to figure out how I want the waistband to go. So, ankles is where I'm starting. Okay, I did this ankle. Works great. So I'm using non-roll, like, three-eighths of an inch elastic. Love this stuff. I love non-roll um, elastic in general. <laughs> um, so this is great. It works. Looks really good. So how I got this was I folded this over. Travis, no. No. Thank you. 
Um, so I folded this over and I just stitched here. But I left about this much of a hole for me to feed the elastic through. And then I fed the elastic through with the safety pin. I overlapped it like this. Stitched it really good. Pulled it in and we're done. Now, said I was going to try on and see if there was the possibility of a waistband. Not only is there not a possibility of a waistband, but this front and back panel is not even long enough to reach a hip. So, since this is obviously supposed to have a waist casing that was not mentioned at all, <laughs> I went ahead and got into my fabric and made five, six inches? Um of a waist casing. Oh, please don't tell me I did this wrong. This is not a Mobius. It is not a Mobius. Okay. Um, so I ended up stitching a hole that's going to end up on the inside of, so that the waistband can uh, be threaded through um, like that. Um, see, doesn't it look so nice and pretty? Um, so since I'm just going to do elastic, I am just going to go ahead and fold this in half, serge it, use the sewing machine, stitch both the bottom or the bottom of the pants to the casing, and call it good. <laughs> um, and then just put the uh, waistband through. So I will show you when I've gotten the other ankle done. And this is stitched on and ready to go, but I am just a little bit frustrated. Um, this is also a lot larger, as I just realized. So, cool thing about the fabric that this black is made out of, which is what I've actually done for most of these, is it has this nifty thing that if you cut it, it tears in a straight line. So, that was my excess into the recycle. Um, I'm going to go ahead and restitch this because I thought I had measured it correctly the first time. Oh well. And then I'm going to, and since the seams now match, I'm going to match the side seams together and stitch. <sighs> Wish me luck. I despise these. Okay. So, waistband is in! Um, unfortunately, it keeps trying to roll because there's enough space for it to flip in on itself. Um, so that can be easily fixed just by, you know, sewing the top of it and being like, no, you don't have that ability anymore. Um, <laughs> these are supposed to be pants that are oversized but cinched. Why? Why this pattern designer? Why? Okay, so even though I added this much, this pants in the uh waist and like upper thigh area is too tight like these are supposed to be big on me like these are not like and you were supposed to put a zipper in this and make like the seams even smaller like what so i'm not the biggest fan of this um construction but if you're gonna use this pattern and you want to have large comfortable pants Add like 10 inches to the top of this from like where the top of this is. Add like 10 inches so that you can have a waistband. And then from the actual like center seam, make it wider by a lot. <laughs> like I'm not saying like 10 inches is even enough. There needs to be a lot more width here that is not here. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do um, with this. I'm just <sighs> so tired. Um, so these are done. I'm not the biggest fan of them. If I make this pattern again to make me some lounge pants for home, there's, there's going to be changes. Like this is supposed to be like a size like 20, 24, like in that range. And I'm a size 18 in jeans and this is too tight. So don't do this. Don't do this. If you're going to do this. All the measurements. Okay, so these are done. I'm going to jump on to the next one.
Let me look at the pattern again because I can't remember which piece is which piece. So there's a front, there's a back, and there's sleeves. Um, and they all connect in a way that um, the top parts make a straight line for the elastic. Um, this was actually a very common pattern of how I would make um, the peasant shirts for the Renaissance fairs. Um, the reason why I say that is because that's part of the reason I chose this pattern is because I'm so familiar with this type of shirt. Um, this was also muslin that's been tea dyed, so every single one took the tea differently. Every single one looks different. And this muslin is also super thin, so I actually cut two of the front and back to sew together as one so that it's not as see-through um, on anyone wearing it. Um, so shirts for the Romani, this would have been pretty typical. Um, the midriff shirts that you see in the pattern would not. Jarvis, <laughs> I love you. Um, shirts were just a general play of what the local population wore with extra embroidery and embellishments. So this just being a plain shirt makes it great for everyday wear or if you're just being a peasant at the Renaissance Fair. So because this muslin is very opaque, I went ahead and stay stitched all of it together for the front and back because... <sighs> anyway, so you can tell the front and back pieces because of the fact that the A both sides match. The sleeves have two different armhole sizes because of the fact that they need um, the front and back to coordinate. So, every piece of muslin is a different color. Um, so, what we're going to do is sew the armhole tops. So, stitching the back side or back panel to the back seams, stitching the front panels to the front seams. Now that the arm or the sleeves are attached to the front and back, let's talk next step. So, the next step is to match the hems of each of both the front and uh, back. So from this hem all the way up to the armpit and then down the sleeve. And that on both sides should basically make this look like a shirt. Now the bottoms were cut on the salvage edge so I don't actually need to hem them or do anything with them. Yay. So I'll do that real quick. Complain about many things about this, but I absolutely am fond of the actual peasant blouse. So it has a straight neckline. Why is that important? Because for my casing, it makes it just fold over and stitch. Feed your elastic and you're done. And it also means that this looks really nice off the shoulders. So there's that for the shirt top. Now for the sleeves. Um, you can do one of two things. You can either add an elastic, like the neckline, or you can choose not to and have it extra flowy. Up to you. I like this pattern. If you can make the sleeves longer, shorter, you can make this into a chemise by just adding length to it. Um, overall, really happy with this pattern for the blouse itself. Um... Overall, I didn't have any problems with it. I'm going to go ahead and finish up the other sleeve by making it match this one. But I highly, highly recommend muslin. It's really nice and airy. And even though there's two layers for both the front and back, it's just nice and flowy and drapey. Anyway, um, so, done! Vests are very much a part of Romani culture. Uh, a lot of men wear them because they are generally easily maintained. So you have your front piece and your back piece of this particular pattern. Um, I interfaced the inner lining because I felt like it was a little too flimsy because this is sheets and cotton, so it doesn't retain its shape well. Um, they would use kind of more expensive materials for this because it was more easily maintained. Um, that was kind of why large hats also got become iconic because they looked nice. Um, for this particular pattern, this is mostly just a basic, basic vest. There is darts right here to make it hug the form a little bit better, 
but you can definitely go without as well. So for this next one, it's the vest. So the vest, you need to sew wrong sides together. Of course, this is not the pretty fabric. Um, wrong sides together at the shoulder for both the inside and the outside. And then I'll show you what to do next. So shoulder seams are done. Okay. Right sides together. We're going to sew the armhole curves. So this is a lot like when I'm doing like other things. So we're going to sew this curve right here so we can turn it inside out. But then we're also doing all of that neckline. And then we're going to flip them right sides out. Um, it's going to be a little fun in getting everything to look nice. But I'm going to go ahead and do those. And then show you what it looks like for the next part. Okay, so mistake. I forgot the dart. Or I almost forgot about the darts before I put this under the machine. And this would have been a lot more difficult with a lot less room. Okay. I have this pin through the center dot, and then on the inside, I fed the other two dots through this pin so that everything's straight, marked my line. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this on all of the other front panels and sew it in place. You do not have to do these if you do not want this like 3D cup shape. Um, you can definitely just skip it. Um, I was going to go ahead and do that because it models... Uh, darts pretty well. Sorry. Um, so you're going to go around and you are going to sew the armhole and the neckline. Just like we did for other bodices, right? The next part is going to be the fun part. So we also are supposed to sew the bottoms of both the front and the back panel. So that's done. So According to the directions, this is how turning it right side out should work. Let's see if it works. Go through the side, grab the front on that side, Boop. pull it out, grab the other front side. It's a good thing I have so much tiny hands, because if I had big hands, there was no way that's going to work. And then, voila! Okay. So obviously I'm going to have to take metal chopsticks and smooth everything out. Be right back. I absolutely love metal chopsticks. Okay, so this is how this should look. Remember, clip your curves, clip your curves, clip your curves. So of course I'm going to top stitch this. So as lumpy and frumpy as it looks right now, it's not going to in a bit when I decide to top stitch it. Um, I wasn't wanting to make this a reversible vest. However, the way that it wants you to connect these side seams is not particularly friendly. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to French seam it, which means I'm going to sew it this way, have a raw seam right here, clip it, sew it on the inside. But before that I do that then, I'm going to top stitch everything so that it lays nicely. And even though I say that does not make it 100% reversible, if you are having your arms down primarily to cover those seams, no one's going to notice except you. So I'm going to go ahead and top stitch this and then I'm going to French seam the side seams so that they look nice and pretty. Stitching fixes everything. Okay, so I went ahead and I French seamed the underarms. After top stitching everything else, I went ahead and actually top stitched the sides, or at least stay stitched them, so that they laid all nice and perfectly. So, that is the vest. Um, again, I did make a little bit of a discretion choice in how I was going to do that underarm seam, but overall, this is a really nice, really quick um, sew, and so I'm really happy with how it turned out. So this is the first year I volunteered and I made costumes for us and this ended up being the standard of what I made every year. Um, basic peasant blouse, um, that square with a hole in the center for the um, overskirt and then just a long basic underskirt. Um, this really didn't change much over the years. Um, I did get ambitious my second year and this was the result of that. Um, I tried making that Snow White 
live action esque pattern and the sleeves that are legit like strips of like cage sleeves did not get done until so there was a month between the county fair that this photo was taken and the actual renaissance fair and they were done for the renaissance fair but they were not done for this um the celtic inspired um medieval dress same thing very um yeah, that dress it was not comfortable for the wearer, so she literally did not last the day in it. I don't blame her, because it didn't breathe. This is my wonderful, wonderful um, adoptive mom. She is modeling a um, long, the first year that I did those long uh, drapey sleeves from the Lori Ann patterns. Um, but the purple overdress is actually another pattern that I... I also got rid of, but it is a, just basically, there's a front, there's a back, and there's a hole for your head in the center. There's no, like, ties on the sides or anything. Um, you could add ties, but it was pretty much expected for you to wear a belt. I didn't make that one again after that year. And then we have the first year that I was allowed to be, like, fae-inspired peasants. So this is our fairy, who actually is one of the ones who took over the games department from me. Um, she looks absolutely adorable. Um, and then we have my friend Stephanie, who makes all of the glorious headbands that you're seeing. Uh, she made these two and the one that was in the previous photo. Um, I made her shirt and her skirts that you can't really see, um, but... For the shirt that I'm wearing, it is actually the same as the Woodland shirt, except the sleeves are longer and with the same scalloping on the edges as the um, upper and lower skirts of the shirt. Um, I also edged them in black so they look singed to go with the dragon motif. And then this is my wonderful mother-in-law a few years later, and this is her standard Renaissance outfit that sh she designed. We start... Uh, but it's basically the same thing that I make every year. It's the um, uh, peasant blouse, and most people don't want the elastic on the sleeves, an overskirt and an underskirt. Um, you can see it again in this one. Um, and everyone accessorizes different, and I generally don't have the same color palette for every single person. So everyone looks different um, in their outfits, which is great. Naughty kitten in his sleep, in his cat tree. He has been naughty. He tried to eat pins out of my bowl again. However, we still love him. <laughs> We're happy that he didn't actually successfully eat one. Um, so if you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe.